such jazz piano books as Jazz Piano Fundamentals, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 2, and for the very first time on camera, the second edition of playing solo jazz piano. Now you can access audiovisual content for every single example in that book. Plus there's two new chapters. So I'm taking a few mailbag questions of uh, things that I've been asked by students. And the first one is one that I've got quite a few times in different forms, which is, should I practice everything in all 12 keys? I'm gonna give the answer of no. <laughs> End of video, no. Uh, and I wanna explain why. So let's start with this. If I were teaching, if I were programming a robot to play jazz, okay, probably not that far off <laughs> from being able to do that, I would absolutely program it to be able to do everything in all 12 keys. You know, we have to be able to play in all 12 keys as a musician. You know, singers need to be able to transpose their tunes to different keys. Just last night I was playing um, with a singer and they were playing G Baby and I Go To You in the key of A. And it was tough, <laughs> but I survived. Um, and you know, even normal jazz tunes like Cherokee goes to B major on the bridge. All the things you are goes to E major on the bridge. Ellington and Strayhorn, they love writing in D flat because I think it was this key that maybe was, was associated with Debussy, in, in my mind at least. So yes, we do need to be able to play in all 12 keys. And if I had a magic wand and I could make sure that you could transpose every tune, transpose every lick, transpose every voicing to all 12 keys, I would wave that magic wand for you. But we as humans are not robots. <laughs> Thank goodness, too. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we have to deal with here is motivation, you know. Um, to me, I see students get burned out as they are trying to work everything through all 12 keys or they're spending, you know, two months on a single project of, okay, I'm going to learn to transpose all the things you are to all 12 keys. And guess what? By the time you've learned key 12, you've forgotten key one. <laughs> um, which brings us to you know, another issue, which is time. I sometimes see students use this concept of transposing as a crutch to not do the harder, more creative, more incisive work of playing jazz. Um, so you know, taking on a project like transposing all the things you are to all 12 keys, it is a noble pursuit but it's not always the best pursuit for you at the moment. You might want to make sure that you place a time limit on your transposing time every day. So motivation, time, um, are issues. I have one more issue that I'm thinking of that I'm forgetting, um, which is just practicality. And when I say practicality, I mean that you're probably gonna play a blues in F 50 more times in your life than you're gonna play a blues in F sharp. Now, on one hand, that one time, you gotta be prepared to play that blues in F sharp. But should you spend as much time practicing the blues in F sharp as in F? Well, maybe, and I'll make an argument for it. I'll make an argument against it and you can decide. Working on the blues in F sharp will help your blues in F sound fresher when you go back to play a blues in F. Because sometimes we do tend to kind of play the same things all the time when we get stuck in a key, when we play again and again. So there's definitely a practicality aspect that I, I spend more time practicing the tunes in the standard keys in which they're played because I want to really, really know them than transposing them. Um, it's not to say never practice the blues in F sharp. It will help your blues in F. But man, you gotta make sure that blues in F is really good first thing before you, you know, worry about playing it in F sharp and B and G sharp and whatever other keys uh, come across. 
And I have one more point about this concept of practicing everything in all 12 keys, which is maybe a higher level thing. But that last point is about artistry. Um, I've heard people say that musicians don't want to sound the same in all 12 keys, and I think there is something to that. Um, a lot of composers think that different keys have different kind of colors, that D flat is very dark, whereas once you move a half step up to D, it's very bright. Um, and so should you be playing the exact same things in D flat as in D? Maybe not. Furthermore, of course, we on the piano and for most instruments, we have different sorts of access points for different keys. You know, I can easily reach, this is just me, a tenth for C, but I cannot reach a tenth for a D flat major. I can play a double thumb on C and D and E together to play the ninth along with the third of this chord for C major. I can't do that for D flat, even if I could reach it, because it's a black key and a white key. So keys, you know, have an inherent physical difference at the piano and for many different instruments. You know, if you think of a guitar, they're going to have open strings to deal with in different places. So, um, you know, I, sometimes I could, again, play devil's advocate and I say, oh, it's a good challenge to try to do the exact same thing, even when your finger patterns are different you know, figure out those finger patterns. Um, but on the other hand, when the question is, should I practice everything in all 12 keys? No, some things, some simple licks, yeah, it's really nice to learn in all 12 keys. Some other things, you know, like complex voicings, tunes, larger exercises, maybe you want to pick a few keys. So what are my tips? What should you do? <laughs> okay, so first thing I just said is think shorter versus longer. So shorter things, small licks, yeah, learn those in all 12 keys. My first lick that I ever learned. You know, you better believe that I know that in all, all 12 keys. My, um, my, two five, my basic 251 voicings that I play. Yeah, I practice those in all 12 keys. You know, I could do that in my sleep. Um, so those shorter, smaller nuggets, yeah, learn those in all 12 keys. Longer things like 32 bar standard tunes, maybe pick just two or three keys, at least at first, um, to learn those out. Um, Depend for those longer things, if you do want to tackle transposing longer tunes, which at some point you kind of have to do, uh, that's important practice, don't try to do every key every day. Um, I love thinking about a two keys per day approach because it maps so nicely onto the week, right? You could do two keys a day for six days, take a day off, start a different tune, two keys a day for six days, take a day off. I think that that is really lovely. Um, yeah, and think about white-black patterns. For example, when I play closed position voicings, they're not so bad if I'm in a key like C or F where I'm really able to stay to the white keys. Or if I'm in a key like G flat where I stay towards the black keys. It's those keys, for me at least, that mix between a lot of white keys and a lot of black keys, like E flat and A flat and you know uh, D and A, where I get really tangled up. One of the things that means is that I don't use them equally in all different keys. I'm much more likely to use those closed position voicings in an F or a G or a C or a, or a G flat on the other end. Um, if I had unlimited time, would I love to improve at that? Absolutely, I would be thrilled to uh, improve that skill. But we have finite amount of time, amounts of time, and you know, I wait until we're playing that blues in F to use those uh, closed position voicings, really. Um, and then lastly, I think it's nice to think about repertoire. 
and the repertoire that you want to know enough to be able to play in a jam session versus the repertoire that you might want to hold dear, perform, record. It's a signature tune, okay? Um, the tunes that you're able to play at a jam session, it'd be great to be able to transpose them, but in my opinion, it's not a priority. Those tunes that you hold really dear, I want you to be able to play those so confidently in every key and maybe even choose a key other than the original key for your version. Um, so I would kind of think in two different levels. So again, my answer here is no. Don't practice everything in all keys. Instead, be strategic. You are not a robot. You need to keep motivation. You have a finite amount of time. There's practicality. And it can actually be artistically useful to have different things uh, to play in different keys. So think strategically. Think about shorter versus longer, maybe just two keys a day. Um, think about how things map onto the instrument and what you want to prioritize in terms of repertoire. I hope that was helpful, everybody. Uh, comment with guacamole if you made it this far through the video. Uh, I'm gonna do some more mailbag videos, so feel free to ask a question in the comments if you have something you're interested in. See you soon.